Hi, and welcome back to Programming with Pax. It has been a little while. <laughs> it has been uh, about six months since I last released a video, and that is because I've been on a crazy adventure uh, for my career. And so I'll share a little bit about that at the end, but for now, let's get into the good stuff. So in today's video, we are going to go over CSS overflow. We'll start by talking about what it is and when you'd want to use it. And then we're going to go over all of the different values that are available. So visible, hidden, scroll, and auto. Let's get started. All right, so to start off, what is overflow? So sometimes when you are styling a website, the content doesn't fit in the borders of the container that you gave it. And when this happens, you can either make it fit or cut it off. If we want to cut it off, this is where the overflow property comes into action. Overflow allows us to clip, hide, or scroll an element's content. An important note, the overflow property only works when an element is block element and it has a defined height. So you need those two things in order for the overflow property to work. All right, so a quick tour of the code. In the HTML, we simply have a div with a class called container. And in there, we have lorem ipsum, two paragraphs of it. And in the CSS, we have the body with a larger font size. Uh, we're taking up the full height. We are giving it a display grid and place item center, which if you are not familiar, this is the same as giving it a display flex with center center. So if we save, nothing happens. I just wanted to show you that this exists. And then we have a container, the container class. And so we are taking up 70% of the parent's width. And also we have a background, uh, purple background color. So normally a box will adjust its height automatically to fit the content within itself. However, if we set a height and then the content is bigger than the container itself, then it will overflow. So you can see this container here, it has a height of 150 pixels, and then the content itself is overflowing outside of the container. So imagine a cup overflowing with water. So this is inside the cup and this is overflowing. Now let's explore the overflow property. So first up, we have visible. So if we save now, nothing changes. So overflow visible is the default value and it allows the content, the overflow content to be <laughs> visible. Next, we have hidden. So save that. And when we set the overflow to hidden, it clips the content and hides the overflow. The content itself is still there. So if we go into the DOM and we look, we can actually see that all that content is still there, the two paragraphs of lorem ipsum. However, it's being clipped and it's hidden. So let's close this down and get back to where we were. Awesome. Next, we have scroll. So let's save. Interesting, very interesting. Setting overflow to scroll will still clip the content like hidden. However, it will add these scroll bars so that we can see the rest of the content by scrolling. You can see that with overflow scroll, we're adding a scroll bar to both the x-axis and the y-axis, even though there's no content to scroll left to right. If we want to show the scroll bar only for the y-axis, we can change the overflow to overflow y. And if we save, now we can see there's no more scroll bar on the bottom. There's also an overflow X. So if we put this to X and I don't know, let's say we had hidden here, this would work as well. So the two are independent and you can have different values. Finally, there is auto. So auto will add a scroll bar automatically. However, only if there is content that overflows. So if we have it as auto and we go back into the HTML and we delete up to, I don't know, this, this attack whatever word here, let's delete everything else, and we save, we can see that the scroll bar disappears. But then as soon as I start adding content back, let's say all this, and I save, now it's gonna overflow, and so the scroll bar reappears. 
Now, in all of these examples, we've just been using text, but the same thing applies when you're dealing with images as well. So if you have a really large image and a smaller container, if you set overflow hidden on the container, then the parts of the image which are overflowing will be cut off. All right, so that is overflow in a nutshell. If you found this video helpful, uh, I will leave a playlist of a whole bunch of other similar CSS videos in the description below. So where have I been? So about six months ago, I joined a startup company um, and it has been a really beautiful adventure. I have learned a ton, uh, both on the technical side and also about myself, um, what I'm capable of and what I value. And so it's been this great experience um, that really just took a lot out of me. I was working 12 to 14 hour days, um, six days a week, and really just giving it my absolute all, which took all of my energy and, uh, and time. Um, and so I, I knew I couldn't make videos as well. I just, just couldn't. Um, but this project is super important to me. And so I knew that as soon as things sort of simmered down and stabilized, that I would be back um, releasing fun videos for you guys. So that is essentially the story. Um, moving forward next week, actually not next week, this week, this week, in a couple of days, there will be a Flexbox crash course that I'll be releasing. And then that'll probably be pretty much it for CSS that I wanna go over um, for now. Um, and then moving forward, there's going to be a bunch of JavaScript videos. So I already have lined up, I think seven videos all on different JavaScript topics that I think are a little bit trickier for, uh, for developers that are just getting started. And so I really want to hammer those out. And then after that, uh, I'll be making a bunch of sort of general advice videos uh, where I'm really just talking to the camera and it's not sort of screen sharing, but just sharing some of my experience on being a self-taught developer and landing, uh, landing a job in the industry. So if you are interested in any of that, uh, be sure to subscribe and it would be awesome if you hit the like button, wherever it is. Uh, and I will see you again in a couple of days. So thank you very much for your time. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you in the next one.